hi there in this video we are going to discuss about various intracellular accumulations uh, as well as pathological calcification and then aging cellular aging which is the last topic of this chapter uh, so let's start with uh, various intracellular accumulation so when uh, uh, different type of material accumulate into the cell when there is uh, reduced uh, excretion or reduced degradation of materials or more than normal amount of material are transported into the cell and these uh, material can be uh, intrinsic or produced within the cell or can be extrinsic or extracellular which are transported from somewhere else into the cell so uh, this intracellular accumulation can lead to fatty changes inside the cell and these fatty changes uh, are due to accumulation of tags or tricycle sides or tricyclycystol inside the cell and these fatty changes are mostly seen into the cell which are involved in the metabolism of fats so most commonly these fatty changes uh, due to accumulation of fat are seen into liver leading to fatty liver disease and it is also called steatosis and they can also be uh, seen into the heart skeletal muscle kidney and other organs so common causes of uh, fatty changes may be toxin protein malnutrition diabetes uh, diabetes obesity anoxia etc the most common cause of fatty liver disease is alcohol abuse and diabetes and obesity which are the most common causes of fatty liver disease in developed nations other intracellular accumulation is cholesterol and cholesterol esters uh, so cellular cholesterol is a part of cellular membranes and it is produce, produced inside the cell in regulated quantity so that membrane function remains normal however if there is excess production of cholesterol this cholesterol can also accumulate inside the cells and uh, sometime uh, there is a, a pathological accumulation of cholesterol to the cell which is seen in the disease called atherosclerosis in atherosclerosis what happens uh, macrophages accumulate the excess cholesterol present in inside the blood and they enlarge and produce foam cells which accumulate and form atheroma or plaques inside the blood vessels and narrow down the blood vessels so cholesterol is also uh, intercellular accumulation inside the cell under various pathological conditions next intercellular accumulation is protein protein accumulate accumulation in the cell are the seen less commonly what will they do happen and the example of protein accumulation here is uh, the condition of nephrotic syndrome normally what happens a small amount of protein or albumin is filtered out into the proximal tubules and it is then uh, reabsorbed by pinocytosis so this pinocytosed protein vacuoles are present inside the proximal uh, convoluted tubular cells uh, in nephrotic syndrome there is a large amount of protein leakage outside the uh, renal tubule in, into the renal tumor of renal tubules and when it is reabsorbed by pinocytosis and there is a greater protein load in the pct cells more but uh, this protein accumulation can also be seen in the uh, plasma cell which synthesizes immunoglobulins when they are synthesizing immunoglobulins at a rapid rate they also accumulate and the protein accumulation also seen inside the plasma cells next come toward glycogen and glycogen accumulation is uh, most commonly seen in the diabetes in diabetes uh, glycogen accumulates in the renal tubular epithelium cardiac myocyte beta cells of islet of langerhans or pancreas moreover there is a group of diseases which called glycogen storage disease in which uh, enzymes involved in glycogen metabolism are defective leading to accumulation of glycogen in due to various uh, body organs next accumulation uh, inside the uh, cell is pigments uh, different pigment can be accumulated into the uh, body tissues which can be carbon which can be lipophilic skin which can be melanin which can be hemoglobin derivatives so carbon is the most common extracellular uh, pigment which is deposited inside the cell and carbon is present inside the environment uh, due to industrialization and uh, vehicles uh, smoke uh, so this carbon uh, moves even into the dispersive passageway is taken up by macrophages and transported into the uh, regional tracheobronchial lymph node and aggregate of this pigment blacken the dispersive passageway and regional lymph node and pulmonary parenchyma and this is overall called anthracosis next pigment is lipophilic skin Lipophilic skin is an intracellular pigment which is generated inside the cell. It is also called wear and tear pigment or the pigment of aging. Uh, uh, with the aging or when cell grow older, uh, they accumulate uh, this pigment due to uh, lipid peroxidation, free radical injury, and uh, this uh, when it is accumulated in large amount, it can give tissue an appearance of brown color, which so it is called brown atrophy. Also, so lipophilic skin is an aging pigment which accumulates in the cell uh, with growing age due to uh, free radical induced injury melanin is a black black pigment brown black pigment which is synthesized by melanocyte inside the skin and it acts as a, as a screen against the ultraviolet radiations 
and uh, it is can also be accumulated inside the cell and uh, can produce moles the uh, next uh, pigment is hemosiderin and hemosiderin accumulation is in under pathological condition when there is iron overload inside the cell iron is stored inside the cell with combination uh, with combination with the protein called apoferritin when iron combines with apoferritin it produces ferritin and ferritin accumulates inside the body cells and when there is large uh, accumulation of uh, uh, ferritin due to iron overload this condition is called hemosiderosis or hem hemosiderosis and uh, uh, the pigment uh, produced is called hemosiderin and Persian blue histochemical reaction and uh, these dyes are used to identify uh, iron overload inside the cell. So uh, although hemosiderin accumulation is pathological uh, under some condition uh, uh, in some part of uh, some cells of the body it is present in under normal condition too for example uh, reticular endothelial system such as bone marrow spleen liver where uh, old red blood cells are destroyed uh, where death hemosiderin is seen normally because uh, red blood cells are uh, rich in iron due to hemoglobin so the uh, places where red blood cells are destroyed they contain hemosiderin next we uh, move toward uh, the topic of calcification so pathological calcification inside the body is deposition of calcium in different body parts and it can be uh, dystopic calcification or metastatic calcification so what is dystopic calcification dystopic, dystopic calcification is the deposition of calcium into different body tissue when blood calcium level is normal so blood calcium level is normal but calcium is getting deposited in some parts of body which parts of body which are necrotic parts when there is injured tissue or the cellular injury uh, calcium deposit in that part and binds with the fatty acid there and uh, fatty acid there are lipids there and uh, produces the manifestation of dystopic calcification although uh, it is uh, localized it can also damage some organs for example amniotic uh, stenosis or aortic valves uh, can be calcified le uh, leading to the reduced function of these valves this topic calcification is initiated by extracellular deposition of calcium uh, calcium phosphate crystal deposit there and then they are aggregated there due to their affinity with uh, the uh, membrane uh, lipids and moreover uh, intercellular deposition of calcium can also occur in the mitochondria of cell now come toward metastatic calcification metastatic calcification is uh, seen in the case of hypercalcemia when there is hypercalcemia calcium can be deposited into multiple tissues and organs of the body and it is a uh, common manifestation when there is increased blood calcium level due to various conditions such as uh, when there is hyperthyroidism uh, hyperthyroidism can be due to uh, uh, tumor of the thyroid gland or there may be secondary hyperthyroidism or there may be increased blood calcium level due to bone destruction bone destruction can be due to pager disease or malignant tumors or due to immobilization or when there is vitamin d intoxication or vitamin d related disorder and when there is renal failure or the disease is increased the blood level of uh, calcium parathyroid hormone uh, increases blood calcium level vitamin d also increases blood calcium level and uh, renal failure uh, reduces the excretion of phosphate and this phosphate retention leads to increased production of parathyroid which further increases the blood calcium level so overall when uh, blood calcium level is increased due to these conditions uh, there is metastatic deposition of calcium into different body tissues so uh, next uh, come toward morphology so calcium salt on grass examination of fine white granules are uh, clumps and uh, dystopic calcification uh, is seen mainly in necrotic tissue and uh, the necrotic necrosis in the tuberculosis granuloma can also be calcified and uh, on radiology it appears that the radiopaque stone gives the appearance of stone on histological, histological examination uh, uh, calcified uh, tissue appears uh, calcified tissue uh, appears as intercellular extracellular basophilic deposits and metastatic calcification can be throughout the body into different organs different body parts and uh, it uh, normally when it is in small amounts it does not produce clinical symptoms but when there is a significant metastatic calcification it can lead to organ damage and organ failure next we move toward the last topic of this chapter which is cellular aging uh, so cellular aging uh, basically occurs due to multiple mechanism or multiple uh, explanation are there to explain the cellular aging so cellular aging is basically uh, due to loss of functional functionality of the cell over time so this loss of function can be due to accumulation of mutation in the dna with time and decrease the replicative capacity of the cell due to loss of telomeres and then there be maybe defective protein homeostasis and then there is also uh, persistent inflammation low level of persistent inflammation all these factors contribute to the uh, cellular aging so as cell age 
uh, they accumulate various mutation inside the uh, their uh, nuclear material although there are different uh, mechanism to repair the dna damage these mechanism are not always perfect and some amount of mutation are the, uh, retained inside the dna and with the aging uh, these mutation grow up and accumulate as a result uh, they further uh, affect the cellular growth and cellular division as a result uh, they uh, reduce the replicative capability and functionality of the cell moreover there is decreased replicative capacity due to loss of telomeres normally uh, there is the telomeres are present in the germline cells and uh, the uh, progenitor cells and these telomeres what they do they are bind to the chromosomal ends and they uh, prevent the dna repair mechanism to identify dna ends as uh, the break up or broken segment of the dna so they protect the uh, dna from, they protect the chromosome and dna from the repair dna repair mechanism and from from fusion as a result the cellular uh, replication continues however if there are no telomeres then dna ends are taken up as broken segment of dna and uh, when they are uh, taken as broken segment of dna then the uh, different the mechanism of the cellular uh, growth are activated which uh, guard, which guard the uh, cellular replicative capacity and they stop the cellular division at that point so uh, telomeres basically uh, prevent the uh, cellular repair mechanism from stopping the cellular growth when uh, cell continues to divide again and again there is a loss of some part of telomeres at every division uh, so when there is loss of telomeres telomeres gradually shorten then a stage reaches where telomeres can no longer protect uh, the uh, ends of chromosome when there are no telomeres then the end of the chromosome are taken as broken dna and as a result uh, cellular growth stops there so this is basically this uh, happens uh, when person ages because their uh, somatic cell al already have limited uh, division capacity due to uh, absence of telomeres however uh, the uh, replicative capacity present in progenitor cells and stem cells which also um, lose their uh, dividing capability with age uh, so this this is the phenomena uh, or this is the mechanism how uh, how telomeres regulate the cellular aging you can see here uh, this is a chromosome and it there are its end with these ends have telomeres these are telomeres and they protect uh, these ends uh, from being recognized by dna repair mechanism as broken dna ends uh, so if they are recognized as broken dna ends cell cycle stops here and so they protect them and uh, when there is continuous cell division they uh, shorten and when they shorten these are recognized as broken dna ends and when they are recognized as broken dna ends then go guardian of cell cycle and governor of um, genome uh, they uh, do what they stop cell cycle at this stage so cell enter into the senescence phase so this is a mechanism how telomeres regulate the uh, cellular aging and cellular uh, replicative capacity and some diseases such as aplastic anemia cytopenias and premature graying of hair skin, pig skin pigmentation nail abnormalities pulmonary and liver fibrosis these diseases are also somehow associated with telomer telomeres so these are collectively called telomeropathies next possible explanation of cellular aging is a defective protein protein homeostasis when cell age there is a defective protein homeostasis because protein synthesis is declined due to reduce uh, reduction in the metabolic activity of cell and protein uh, protein degradation of uh, misfolded proteins also declined as a result the synthesis of normal proteins decreased and misfolded protein also accumulated in this inside the cell due to a reduced activity of proteasome and chaperone activity also decreases so misfolded protein inside the cell increase when misfolded protein inside the cell increase various cellular functions are compromised and this also ultimately leads to the cellular death by apoptosis or uh, necrosis uh, basically apoptosis occur when there is uh, combination of misfolded proteins so these were the different uh, explanation for the cellular aging and uh, moreover there is also a, a more one more explanation which is when there is uh, aging when cell age there is some uh, low level of persistent inflammation this persistent inflammation leads to uh, release of different cytokines from the inflammasome, inflammasome pathway and these cytokines also induce the cellular accelerate the cellular aging process and then can also lead to the chronic disease such as atherosclerosis or type 2 diabetes or heart diseases and so on so how to uh, stop this aging process this aging process uh, cannot be stopped totally it continues whatever you do uh, although the studies are in process to identify various genes and various signaling pathway which are responsible for aging process so that they can target these genes and uh, the signaling pathway therapeutically to slow down the aging process 
however currently uh, there are two approaches to uh, reduce this aging process which are uh, calorie restriction and increasing physical activity when uh, you reduce your calorie intake what happens uh, insulin like growth factor signaling stop uh, decreases when this signaling decreases cellular growth and cellular division decreases when cellular growth and division decreases there is less accumulation of mutation as a result uh, there is uh, less accumulation of mutation and when there is less accumulation of mutation aging process slows down uh, and it also improves the protein homeostasis and uh, cellular functionality moreover uh, the increased physical activity also does the same and uh, reduces the aging process and how aging is accelerated aging process is accelerated via stress when there is stress there is increased production of glucocorticoid or stress hormone which is cortisol and when they, there is increased production of uh, glucocorticoid there is a increase in blood glucose level when there is increased blood glucose level insulin secretion increases when insulin secretion increases there is more insulin like growth factor signaling which leads to the more cellular metabolism and more cellular growth and more and more uh, accumulation of mutation which ultimately leads to more and more cellular aging so these were the different explanation of aging first aging is due to combination of mutation inside the dna uh, with time then aging is due to uh, redu reduction in telomere telomere length with uh, rapidly uh, which continues replication of the cell uh, then aging is due to uh, disturbed protein homeostasis with aging and then aging due to low level of persistent inflammation and how aging can be slowed down aging can be slowed down by calorie restriction as it slows down the uh, signaling pathway of insulin like growth uh, factor receptor and uh, reduces the cellular growth and uh, accumulation of mutation and physical activity also decreases the aging process while aging is accelerated via stress because it increases the glucocorticoid which increase the insulin insulin like growth factor signaling by increasing the secretion of insulin so it was all about today's lecture and this aging was the last topic of chapter 2 of Robin's basic pathology thank you